Hello, welcome to another episode of Ocean Talks. I'm very, very happy to have Veronica Seurat, realtor with Remax Camosun with me. And Veronica, there was one question that I really, really wanted to cover in our conversation here today. Yes. And that is, how can I get into the home that I want to? I've been talking to a lot of young clients recently. And one of the first things that I ask, ask them is, what are your goals? Right. And they're all saying buy a house. Right. They don't know if they want to go to school yet. They don't know what their job looks like. But that is at the top of everybody's mind. Right. So. Let's yeah. discuss that. Thank you for having me on. No, anytime, anytime. Um, so we talked about this before we came in. And basically we're starting from a place of somebody having a down payment already right now we are going to talk about how much of a down payment you need yeah but for the purposes of this conversation here and for you guys there we are going to be starting from a place that you have your down payment already because when you invest with ocean wealth that is our job to get you that down payment um and the second thing is we're not going to be talking from the perspective of, of a mortgage broker so in terms of ratios and what you need to get approved, that will be a conversation for a future episode. Stay tuned. Yes. And the, uh, the last thing I wanted to mention is that when people think about buying a house, they are thinking about single family homes mm -hmm. primarily. Do you, do you find that as well? Uh, I think that people are starting to understand that that may not necessarily be the home that they first buy. Yeah. Um, but it is a conversation of, you know, when you first start working with somebody in real estate is talking about what their hopes are and what their yeah. needs are. Um, but it's not always, the, mm -hmm. that's not always the first step. Yeah. Cause the, the benchmark value of a single family house and we're talking like house, yard, three bedrooms, that's cat. Right. That's right. Is, it's over 1.1 million in Victoria right now. That's right. Yeah. In the Victoria core for September 2021, it's 1.1 million. Yeah. Oh, my God. And for a condo, it's 545. That's the benchmark. Mm -hmm. And by benchmark, just to clarify, you mean median price. Yes. Right. Okay, perfect. So that is one huge takeaway yeah. is that, and we're going to cover this, so spoiler alert, but getting into the market doesn't necessarily mean getting into a single family house right away. No. There are roads to get into real estate. That's right. And it right. can be done. And yeah. I've seen a lot of people be successful with this. Mm -hmm. But uh, oftentimes you do start with something smaller mm -hmm. and build your way up. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people have been successful in doing this. And our market has grown tremendously over the last decade. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah. So what would you say the first step is? Like, what's the first thing you should do? Well, the first thing you just covered it essentially is having your down payment and mm -hmm. speaking to a mortgage broker yeah. uh, and getting pre-approved. So you mm -hmm. have a really strong idea of where you qualify mm -hmm. and what price range you're looking at. Uh, step two is uh, finding a realtor that you're really comfortable with and one that has uh, the skill set to help you in this very tricky market. Mm -hmm. um, in most cases, uh, a buyer will be if they're submitting an offer, they'll be in a multiple offer situation. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a lot of strategy with mm -hmm. that. Yeah. And I, um, it is the multiple offer situations. Are you finding that they're coming up more and more in the condo market as well? They are. Yes. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Oh man. Yeah. More than, more than half the homes sold are sold in multiple offers right now. Wow. Um, so that's the market we're in right now. Mm -hmm. Um, and really it's driven by uh, high demand and extremely low inventory. Mm -hmm. And I don't see our inventory uh, really improving that much. It's not mm -hmm. its not something that can improve quickly. No. So I think we'll be in a market like this for some time. Uh, and the demand comes from a lot of places. It's certainly uh, new homeowners as well as people just moving within the city. Mm -hmm. But we have, uh, across Canada, the highest uh, migration rate of people moving to BC. So mm -hmm. um, for various reasons mm -hmm. and our climate and oh, the climate's huge. I mean, that's a huge part of it, right? I, I don't even know what a what a snowy five month winter looks like. No, like, neither do I. So, so <laughs> blessed spoiled. living here, absolutely, yes. absolutely. So we know that we live in paradise, and I think a lot of people want that as well. And I don't see that. I think I think that will continue. Mm -hmm. So how how do you know when you found the right realtor? Like what what would you look for? Well, it's someone you're going to spend a lot of time with. Um, so, uh, and you're going to share a lot of your personal information with certainly your finances and your 
the dynamic of what you're wanting. Um, but you want someone that has enough experience that they know how to navigate a multiple offer situation. Mm -hmm. Just that's just one example. Um, someone that you know that you just feel comfortable with and that you trust, and uh, you know because you spend a great deal of time together, you should like them. Yeah, um, it can be a lot of fun actually, mm -hmm. uh, looking for homes and you know discussing all the pros and cons, and then preparing for when you do find the right one, how you're gonna how you're gonna be successful in, mm -hmm. in getting that home. Yeah, it's. Um, I know when I worked with uh, with my own realtor, he was phenomenal. He was fantastic, yeah. and um, just having having that guidance and having that that trust relationship was such. It's key. It was such a weight off the shoulders. Yeah, exactly. It's mm -hmm. it's really important. I think that the best way to prepare you when you're actually finally in the market and you're looking is to. Um, have all your ducks in a row, mm -hmm. certainly with your down payment and your mortgage broker, mm -hmm. but to have somewhat of a strategy in place so that when mm -hmm. you do find the home that you like, that you want to write an offer on, mm -hmm. um, that you've already, you've already gone over it with your realtor and you know it, you recognize this is a home that checks a lot of boxes for you mm -hmm. and you're ready to implement and part uh, of strategy. Uh, sorry, part of that is knowing what to compromise on too, right? Yes. Especially when you're first getting into it. Would yes. You, would, okay. Yes, I think that, um, you know, your initial conversation with your realtor will be kind of uh, idealistic about mm -hmm. what everything that you want, like in the perfect home, what, what are the features that it has? What do you need? What do you want? Mm -hmm. Neighborhood, size, bedrooms, bathrooms, etc. Mm -hmm. And then you really start looking within your price range and your budget. Mm -hmm. And it can, there, you may need to compromise at times, uh, make some concessions. Uh, you know, often times it's neighborhood you think that you wanted a certain neighborhood but then you realize that if maybe you go a little bit further out of town mm -hmm. you might get a little more bang for your buck exactly. and uh, I see that happen a lot where people start to realize the benefits of that and mm -hmm. where they originally thought that they definitely wanted to be in kind of mm -hmm. the core of Victoria um, they're actually very happy to go to the, to the west shore it's beautiful mm -hmm. um, a lot of amenities and great communities out there yeah and and in in my case I know that um, the commute time was a really high priority Priority yes. for me. I was very lucky to get into a condo in late December. Yes. And um, I have my son with me. Yes. And I ideally I wanted a two bedroom, right? But just looking at my budget and just looking at what I could find right. closer to town because I needed him to be able to get to school and I needed to be able to get to work at a reasonable time that I realized that the location was much more important to me than the count of bedrooms. Right. So what I did was I ended up going into a one bedroom mm -hmm. and I turned the living area with this amazing Ikea flip up storage bed yes. into a sleeping area for myself. And when the um, when I'm not sleeping in the bed during the daytime, it's just a day bed. People sure. sit on it. People yeah. hang out and watch TV. And yes. I have my sectional in the corner with... Uh, with the dining table in the middle and it's like a little bench seat you know it can it can that work is such if, a great example and it's it, and you're really happy oh i'm i'm as soon as i walked in there i'm like this is it like yeah. this is the best thing in the yes. world i painted the walls green yes i got new flooring like <laughs> don't don't let me hijack this it's just you, <laughs> it's you can tell how exciting it is yeah. when you find the right place and it can evolve from what your initial ideas are mm -hmm. to what you end up purchasing. So, yeah, um, yeah it, you have sometimes have to get creative, and mm -hmm. that's a perfect example of that. So, what are some? Uh, we've talked about location, and we've yes. talked about um, number of bedrooms. What are some other key things that you see when you're talking to clients that um, uh, that are worth considering when someone's thinking about their ideal home? Um, I think we've really covered a lot of them. I'd say the most popular ones are commute. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, if there's like a family dynamic or uh, parks and amenities in the area is important. Mm -hmm. um, busy streets, uh, yeah. quiet areas. Um, other than that, square footage, size, and uh, probably another one we haven't discussed is storage. Storage mm -hmm. seems to come up quite a bit. Also, uh, it's really important. Also, um, uh, especially if we're talking about entry-level homes and entry-level condos, in-suite laundry yes. is one that uh, is becoming rarer and rarer as I've kept my eyes on my own Yeah, budget. Another one is parking, actually. Oh, my uh, God, Certainly some true. of the new construction in the downtown core, not mm -hmm. all units include parking. So, mm -hmm. Um, yeah, depending on how important that is, maybe you work downtown and you're able to do that and have a, wor a working kind of walk to work environment mm -hmm. could work out really well. Oh, and I did just think of one that we didn't talk about oh. beforehand as well. And that is, again, if we're talking about going into a condo, going into a townhouse, mm -hmm. you want to know what the 
de depreciation English, report. That's the one. Yes. Depreciation report looks like, and you want to know what the strata fees are like. Yes. And uh, that, if, if you don't consider that, you could find yourself in a very, very sticky situation. You can. However, I have to say, I think the safety factor is built in mm -hmm. because uh, when you buy strata, all that information is available to you and your mm -hmm. realtor will provide it to you. Awesome. Um, in most cases, it's really constructed into the contract that you actually have to approve all of those documents. So mm -hmm. you're looking at minutes uh, and seeing what the strata has been discussing in their strata meetings, uh, the depreciation report, you're looking at the financials, mm -hmm. um, and there's just so much information at hand. You really get more information when you buy a strata mm -hmm. than you would when you're buying a single family home That's where you true. don't have access to minutes and really um, detailed with regards to uh, what they've been doing in the home so mm -hmm. um, yeah that is fantastic actually and that's that's something that uh, just gives people give buyers more um, confidence when purchasing yeah and um, just as a side note as well there uh, you can get those strata financials and you can get them uh, poured over by professionals I used condo clear yes in December yes. and they were phenomenal yes they are 100% worth the money gave me a I ton agree. of peace of mind. Yes, exactly. Nice. Yeah, because you're navigating documentation that you've, you know, in many cases haven't really seen before. So you've got your realtor's input, mm -hmm. but uh, using a company like Condo Clear will help you. Yeah. Um, yeah, they'll go through it with you and, and point out, or they may just notice something to, to help you kind of educate you. Awesome. And so we've, we've talked about uh, getting into a condo. We've talked about um, the, uh, the, how important mortgage pre-approval is. And, but what if, what if we're still set on the dream of owning that single family home? Like what is the best way to attain it? Do you think? Well, probably having a really strong down payment. Yeah. Um, realistically to help you, uh, you know, might give you a, a little leg up with regards to how you get pre-approved for mm -hmm. a home in that, that price range. Mm -hmm. Like I said, the in core Victoria, the single family home, uh, the average is a 1.1 million. Mm -hmm. Um, so if you're, if you're able to be in that kind of budget, um, that's, mm -hmm. you know, it, it's a tough market. There's, there isn't a lot of inventory right now. Yeah. Um, so many of those homes maybe were priced at under a million, but because of a multiple offer situation drove the price up. Mm -hmm. Um, but if, yeah, if you're lucky that you're able to go into that price point right away, uh, most cases that's not, most yeah. people are starting so out with buying something smaller, holding it for a few years, enjoying it, mm -hmm. making some concessions. Maybe it's smaller than what they wanted. And mm -hmm. then when the timing's right, selling it and moving up in the market mm -hmm. and, and eventually. So it's there. a, it, it's an eventual goal. It's one yes. that you can work towards. Yes. Okay, and it's possible. I've seen many, many clients do it successfully. Nice. Um, and you know, even, I mean, gosh, we've had markets that in three years, the turnaround with what, especially if you put some sweat equity into your home and you mm -hmm. really care for it, yeah. um, put it on the market, have it properly marketed, mm -hmm. you can do really well. So bottom line is uh, I need to watch a lot of home improvement videos <laughs> on YouTube and then I'll, I'll just roll turn up around. your sleeves and we'll, get in there. We'll roll up the sleeves. Yes. Here we go. Here yes. we go. So yeah, I am. Um, uh, I've really enjoyed having you on. Like, Thank you, I John. feel like we have. We've provided a really good roadmap for someone who is wanting to get into the market but has just felt like it is an unattainable goal. But it is absolutely it is attainable. attainable. Yeah. I can tell you, I see people do it all the time. Nice. And it's so, the best yeah. feeling in the world it once is. you get in it's, there. It's great. Talk yeah. To, yeah, when you find your realtor that you want to talk to, um, start that conversation. Even if you don't think you're quite ready yet, mm -hmm. uh, reach out and um, start preparing for it. Yeah, exactly. Well, thank you for watching, and thank you to Veronica for coming in. If uh, if they want to learn more about your business, uh, your website is? It's um, realestatebyveronica.ca. Okay, perfect. Yes, and I'm at Remax Camosa in Oak Bay. Nice. And uh, more than happy to talk to anyone that has any questions. Awesome. Well, hope you have a great day. Thank you. Hope you all have a great day. We'll see you on the next episode. Thank you. Thank you.